Alec Miller, founder of Royals of Rogues, and I'm here with another video on how to run your own motion design agency. Now, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what's in a name. Coming up with a name can actually be very difficult. It ended up being one of the things that held me back for months from starting my own business. I wanted my name to be just right. I wanted it to have the right feel, the right fit, to be unique. Just run. And I'm gonna tell you how you achieve all those and what my process looked like from naming my company. And then I'm gonna tell you to throw all of it out the window and just suck it up and name it whatever, it doesn't really matter. And I'll explain why it doesn't really matter as well. So you obviously need a name, not just for branding purposes, but legally you have to name your business something, you have to open up your business account under something, people have to make checks out to something, and typically we want it to symbolize something more than just ourselves. You can do that if you're just looking to kind of be um, a freelancer and you want to brand yourself as your name, uh, that's a great way to go forward. There are plenty of incredibly successful companies that are just named after the founder. Some you might not even realize, so there's obviously ones like Charles Schwab, but then there's also Bose and Dell, which is also named after their founders, just their last name. So you could easily just name your company your last name and then motion and then eventually drop that once you're known well enough for what you do. But most of us are very creative and we don't really wanna just name a company after ourselves. Uh, it feels kinda lame, especially when we could go buy something really cool like The Mill or uh, Buck or you know Golden Wolf, uh, which is like, I, come on, Golden Wolf, that's a pretty awesome studio name. So you wanna name yourself something that's you know eye-catching as well as um, maybe communicates a little bit of your personality and uh, also has some meaning to yourself, you know, some significance. So my brain went to the same spot that everyone else's brain goes to when you wanna name something. And that's like Greek mythology. I don't know why that's the case. Maybe it's because our language is Latin based, but we all like to go back to Greek and Roman times whenever we wanna name a company. It just feels more official, it feels more founded. That's why almost every sports team is like the Trojans. And you have the Spartans and it's just a very easy resource to draw from. So I was originally looking at the Argonauts, which I believe were Jason's sailors, or maybe it might've been another um, group of sailors. The idea was like, well, we're all together on this ship and stuff like that. And when I started looking into it and doing research, I found out that everybody was called Argonauts. There was like a million Argonaut studios. It was gonna be impossible to find us. And if push came to shove, there might be some legal issues around the name if people wanted to sue us for it. So how I went about naming Royals and Rogues is, at first, I thought about what I wanted it to be. Um, what I wanted the company to be was, essentially, it's a ragtag team of professionals that are also extremely good at what they do. And so what I was looking for is kind of that dichotomy of, we're like James Bond, but we're not afraid to get our hands dirty. The A-team, but with a touch of class. So I went back to my thoughts on that dichotomy of, you know, how am I gonna balance this idea of being, you know, roguish and independent and um, kind of a team of misfits, as well as getting across though that we do quality work that really stands out as professional and that clients are gonna get treated very well. So I kept toying with the idea and ended up making a list of words. Um, and unfortunately that notebook was literally stolen. Somebody stole my backpack with that notebook in it. And so I can't show you, but I had a list of words that were kind of roguish in nature. I had like scoundrels and rogues and thieves and ne'er-do-wells and things like that. And on the other side, I had a list of words that were more refined. So it was like, honorable, glorious. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, right, was a kind of an inspiration. So I'd have gentlemen on one side and then rogues on the other and thieves and everything. So I, I originally thought maybe like honorable thieves. And when I pitched that name to people, they were like, yeah, I don't think you want thieves in the name of your business if people are gonna be giving you money. And it was a good point. And it didn't might not get the right idea across again. So then I played with the idea of maybe not thieves, but I think rogues is what I settled on. I really like the term rogues, but I couldn't find the first word. Like honorable rogues doesn't sound right. Gentleman rogues, no. A really cool name would have been the gentleman bastards, but that was already taken by uh, The Lies of Lacklemora, which is a, a, a book I'm a big fan of. And I wasn't gonna rip them off that 
that crudely. I, I kept trying to play with this idea, like how do I, how do I get this idea of being professional, but also rough and tumble? So after having this list and going through it a few times and adding probably 10 to 20 words on each side, I really wasn't getting anywhere. I was still kind of hitting my head against this wall of, I have the rogue side, I have that side really well, but I couldn't find the right other pairing, especially not one that sounded right, that kind of rolled off the tongue. One day I was listening to music and a band came up called the Royal Deluxe. It struck me, I was listening to it and I was like, that's it royals and rogues that makes so much sense and it fits so well i tried it out and i said it a few times i was like yes yeah i typed it out and looked at it and it looked really good so as soon as i had that name kind of in my head i ran to my logo designer and said hey make some sketches just with these two words just royals and rogues we'll do whatever you want and he came up with some great looks he had a king and a, and a thief standing back to back he had a skull my original thought i think was a skull with a crown on it um, that's been done a million times and uh, once again that's like how unartistic I am. He did some looks with that which looked kind of cool but then he had this one concept which was like a pair of brass knuckles and a crown on the other side and that was really intriguing to me and it kept sticking out and it was very simple and I could see how it could fit in many different spaces and sizes um, and it worked with just having R and R underneath it as well as the whole word royals and rogues. So from there, I had him flesh out that idea and eventually we got to the logo you see today. It's a bit big, it's a bit bombastic, but I like it that way. The other thing that sold me on the name is I started Googling it right away after sending it to my logo designer, trying to see what our competition was. And to my surprise, there wasn't any at all. There was a single book, I believe, written by a children's author, as well as a surprise box, like one of those boxes you can get shipped to you every month. Um, that named one of their releases Royals and Rogues, but nothing that was a company that we'd have to fight legally or fight for ad space. And what's super exciting is even to this day, if you Google search Royals and Rogues, we're the top result. So that was a huge win for me. I finally came up with the perfect name after spending six months putting off starting my business. I happened to get lucky with some inspiration and a title that wasn't taken as well as something that fit me really well. So while I found a great name, frankly, none of that mattered at all. I didn't need to go through that whole process. I probably could have chosen pretty much any couple of words and move forward. And here's why. Two reasons. Um, one is potentially there's a better way to name yourself. And that is simply choosing something that sounds really great to you. That's a made up word that you can completely own the copyright to. So probably two syllables are left. This is names like Kleenex, Uber, Clorox. These are very simple names that don't really mean anything. They're not an actual product. They don't actually exist um, as far as what they represent, right? Like a royal and a rogue are real things in people's minds. But these things can be completely owned anytime anyone talks about them ever. It's only in reference to your product or your company. The other thing that's great about something like an Uber is it takes the place of your competition. If it's easy enough to remember, it's gonna be the go-to phrase no matter what. And so I find myself saying Uber Eats and catching an Uber, even though I don't use them at all. I use Lyft for cars and I use Postmates for food. But to most people, all independent driving services are just Uber. So according to many professionals, including Marty Neumeyer, the right way to go about naming your company is to just choose a name that is catchy, that's a spin on something that sort of sounds like your field, but is really short and memorable. And to be honest, if you don't do this, people will do it for you. Okay, so Macintosh gets shortened to Mac or Apple. IBM is another good example. I forget even what IBM stands for, but we just say IBM rather than something, something business, technology, whatever, whatever. However, even that really doesn't matter at all, in my opinion. Names don't make companies, companies make names. The same thing with logos. Everyone talks about the world's greatest logos and why they're so great and who designed them. Wells Fargo is a great example. It's a crappy logo for kind of a crappy brand, but the company is doing well enough, it's famous enough, it has enough people that liked it for a long enough amount of time that you've been branded. You see the stagecoach, you know it's Wells Fargo. In fact, you can see a full live action stagecoach and probably think Wells Fargo. So it doesn't necessarily matter that the logo is perfect or isn't um, able to be replicated in small and large areas. The business makes the logo, not the logo makes the business. If you're trying to name a company, if you're trying to design a logo for a company, it's pretty much the same thing in my opinion. There's a process you can use to help you decide, which was asking myself about the inspiration of the company, um, then thinking of words that might describe that in an interesting way, 
and then a visual to represent those words. And that's how we came up with our name and the logo. You can also just go for something that's really unique, that's gonna stand out and be memorable and easily copyrighted. And then you can also just name it whatever the heck you want. You can name it after yourself. So my real advice is don't worry about it too much. Choose something that you like, something that kind of inspires you. And if you want, you can take my whole process of figuring out the right one for you. But really, it's just important that you can get the URL, that you can get the business license, and that you can get started. Your name is something that it is gonna be on your business cards, and so you should like it, because you gotta say it a lot. But really, it isn't the end of the world if you just start your company and then rebrand in the future. The important thing is to get going and not get too hung up on the perfect name for your business. So this was a bit more of a simple video, but I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you in your naming process or perhaps took off some of the pressure to find the perfect name. If you have any other questions about starting your own motion design company, let me know in the comments below and I promise I will make a video about them. That's a good way to get your questions answered for free by someone that's done it, that's been there, that's in the industry, that's been running a company for over three years. And I love sharing it. I love answering questions and it gives me more ideas for videos. So feel free to leave that down below. Again, if this helped you out or if you're interested in one of our future topics, hit subscribe because we're gonna be going through the entire process from this boring stuff like naming it to you know managing a team, making storyboards, how to come up with a great end product. All of that's gonna be covered in this series. And I'll see you in the next one. He's got clout, clout, clout.